It's easy to buy 1 16th inch aluminum strips like this one, which is one and a half inches wide. This is 6061 aluminum, which seems just right for lightweight camera rigs for kite or balloon aerial photography. It's plenty strong and a little bit flexible. It's easy to cut, bend, and drill with hand tools, so you don't need a metalworking shop. But I'm at an impasse trying to figure out which of these two designs makes more sense. This configuration of bends and holes allows a camera to be firmly attached with a quarter twenty thumbscrew. The shaft of a peak of A or pendulum suspension can be securely attached to the top, and this is all you need to fly a camera in mapping mode, taking the deer photos. There are a couple of ways to add protection for the camera. This is a one gallon iced tea jug, which is very tough plastic and has this strong, thicker edge around the bottom, which I didn't cut away. This is really excellent protection for the camera. It's also easy to attach standard captory leg brackets, and then various configurations of polyethylene tubing can be attached for camera protection. Oblique aerial photos are also possible just by rotating the camera around the thumbscrew. This also works great when using a tea jug for camera protection. But these oblique photos will be in portrait mode, not in the more sensible landscape mode. An addition is required for landscape mode oblique photos. Like this 3D printed hinge platform. With the hinge, it's easy to switch between mapping mode and any angle of oblique mode. But this doesn't work with the tea jug. So getting landscape oblique photos requires both the 3D printed leg brackets and the 3D printed hinge, which makes this approach a little less accessible to most people. That's where the other aluminum bracket comes in. With this design, you can switch between the deer and oblique photography by moving the suspension attachment between two connectors. This works with either a T-jug or tubing bumpers, so no specialized 3D printed parts are needed. But the oblique angle is fixed, not infinitely adjustable. And I think it will be harder to make this design work with different cameras and still allow the camera to be balanced in both the nadir and oblique positions. So which is better, a more universal solution which requires some custom 3D printed parts, or an imperfect solution which requires nothing but a bent strip of aluminum, a T-jug, and a thumbscrew?